Soldiers of the invading Russian army have used armored combat vehicles to close the passage under the railway bridge near Selavoda village of Pokrovsk district in eastern Donetsk region. The invaders, who blocked the road with at least four vehicles, fled, abandoning the T-72 tank, which was fully operational. As a result, the crossing was opened, and the tank worth $4 million was taken away by fighters of the Karadag unit of the Ukrainian National Guard's 15th Brigade. The crew members of the tank trying to hide were killed by shells fired from the drone. The West's strategy, and the US in particular, to end the war in Ukraine after two and a half years remains the same. Find a middle ground between supporting Ukraine and punishing Russia on the one hand and reducing the risk of escalation on the other. At the same time, writes foreign policy, however, as rational as this approach may seem, it is based on a mistaken assumption that Putin's mind can be changed. The evidence suggests that Putin is simply unconvinced on Ukraine. For him, preventing Ukraine from becoming a bastion that the West can use to threaten Russia is a strategic imperative. He has taken personal responsibility for achieving that outcome and likely believes it is worth almost any price. Trying to force him to give in is a futile exercise that simply wastes lives and resources. The newspaper writes, It is noted that there is only one viable option for ending the war in Ukraine on terms acceptable to the West and Kyiv. Wait out Putin. When Putin ordered the invasion, it was a war of his choosing. There was no urgent threat to Russia's security that would require a large-scale invasion of its neighbor. And because it is a war of choice, Putin has the power to stop it. The war is not existential for Russia. Withdrawing Russian troops from Ukraine would not threaten the existence of the Russian state and would likely not even threaten Putin's own rule. He could easily declare victory in Ukraine and launch an accompanying information campaign to justify his reversal. FP believes. According to the newspaper, Putin's attack on Ukraine is best viewed as an unfair preventive war launched to stop what Putin saw as a future threat to Russia's security. At the same time, it was a surprisingly risky move for Putin, given that he had previously tried to minimize the use of Russian resources. The evidence suggests that on Ukraine, Putin simply cannot be swayed. He is fully committed. FP writes. The publication emphasizes that the fact that the war is so out of step with Putin's usual risk calculation suggests that he has made a strategic decision regarding Ukraine that he is unwilling to back down from. Thus, Western pressure is unlikely to force him to change his mind and end the war on terms acceptable to Kyiv and Washington. If Putin is unwilling to stop his offensive in Ukraine, the war can only end in one of two ways either because Russia has lost the ability to continue its campaign or because Putin is no longer in power. And as FP notes, achieving the first result by degrading Russia's capabilities is unrealistic since Putin can continue to throw soldiers and resources into the fight and the Russian military is unlikely to collapse. This leaves a second way to end the war, Putin's departure from the Kremlin. It is entirely possible that he will leave voluntarily or be forced out. What is certain is that at some point he will die. Only when he is no longer in power can the real work of permanently resolving the war in Ukraine begin. The publication concludes, 
Until then, Washington should focus on helping Ukraine hold the front lines and prevent further Russian military gains and conserve its resources. It's an unsatisfactory and politically unpalatable approach, but it's the only realistic option. Foreign policy says 